Hi, I'm Lindell Higgins from GiveOxygen.com and I am here today to talk to you about PPE, personal protective equipment as far as COVID-19. Before we get started, of course, please do your own research and also to consult with medical professionals to see what is best for you. Everyone's situation is unique and different, so it is important to know what is best for you. But here is some information that I have found helpful that I wanted to share with you today. So there are four elements that you need to keep in mind with a mask. The material, how it fits, how you wear it, and that it's clean. So let's start with the material. So everybody's talking about these N95 masks that medical professionals need and want N95 masks. What does that mean? So the materials in an N95 mask essentially keep out 95% of the junk we are breathing in, which is great. When they are in an environment with germs and bacteria, it prevents 95% of it from getting into their respiratory system. Um, and still allows air to move in and out so they can still breathe. Obviously, the N95 masks are unfortunately somewhat scarce and those need to be saved for people on the front lines, nurses, medical professionals, things like that. What can the rest of us do? So the thing to keep in mind is the material. So the denser the weave of the fabric, the more you keep out. Seriously, something is better than nothing, obviously. The one thing that I really want you to think about and I want to warn you about is a lot of people are putting mask tutorials online and so many of them are great and fun and you can use things around the house and it's so helpful, but some people are using things such as vacuum filters. And although those filters say that they filter out 95% or they're HEPA filters and things like that, when its original intention is not for human use, you don't know what's actually in it, and sometimes we actually do know what's in it. So in the case of the vacuum cleaner um, filters, that has fiberglass in it, and that is so damaging to your lungs. Please, please, please look into what you are using before you put it on your face. Two, how you wear it. So thinking about germ transfer, the idea of PPE is to prevent the germs from entering your body. So think about all of your entrance points. The more of those that are covered, the more you will prevent germs from entering your body. So I've been seeing a lot of people wearing masks like this, which is fine, but they're wearing them here do you see that two of my entrance points are exposed and I could be covering them? That is why everybody is saying to not touch your face because on average, your face has one, two, three, four, five entrance points. So the more of those you can cover, the better. That is why you are seeing doctors with the uh, N95 masks on, and then some sort of goggle or um, sheet in front of their face. Three, how it fits. The tighter the fit and the tighter the seal on your face, obviously the less gets into your system. The N95 masks are, um, they have a piece of metal here and they are circular. So they actually push into your face in order to make a seal with your skin. And don't worry, I did wash my hands. That is why you see so many nurses and doctors with that bruise that's happening. That's because that mask is super, super tight. Obviously with something like this or the bandanas or things like that, you can't get it airtight. But what you can do is set yourself up for as much success as possible. You'll want to make sure that you can actually fit it over your nose. And so some of these, like this one, actually comes with a little piece of malleable metal in it, which is great. So you'll want it to actually fit over your nose. Or if you are sewing it yourself, you can use any malleable wire, pipe cleaner, electrical wire, jewelry wire, 
a really thin paper clip and sew it in and then make sure that it fits around your nose. And then when you put it on, you'll want to make sure that you push it gently onto your face with clean hands. Of course, we wanna be doing this with clean hands and then attach it somehow. So think about the more space that you have, the more air from the outside can get in. Also, a lot of people are making these masks themselves, which is awesome but they're using um, a sewing machine or stapler or things like that. When you do that, you're actually puncturing little holes into the mask. I highly recommend using a glue gun or something on the outside of it to make sure that no air is getting through the holes. Side note, make sure you are not using a toxic glue. You are breathing. Don't do it. Finally, you want the mask to be clean. You do not want to be reinfecting yourself all the time. You'll want to clean it every time you use it. My rule of thumb is once I leave my house, I am completely contaminated. I know that sounds kind of paranoid, but if you keep that mindset, you are less likely to make mistakes. So even when I'm in my car, I'm assuming I'm, I am contaminated, so I can't touch my face in the car. I assume that my purse is contaminated. And so all the things that go outside with me either stay in one spot, my purse or a backpack or something like that, so I don't bring those germs into the house, or if the germs actually do need to come into the house with me, the mask that I'm wearing, the clothes that I'm wearing, the groceries that I bought, those get washed and disinfected. So you change your clothes when you get home, you make sure that you take off your shoes, then you make sure that you disinfect the masks. So some of these masks are one time wear, throw them away, or you make sure that you wash them or disinfect them. The reason it is important to wear and utilize these things is to not only protect yourself from getting anything, but also from spreading it. Um, since some people are asymptomatic. And think of this mask as your own personal fire break. That chaos is happening around you and you draw this line in the sand and it cannot cross and eventually dies out. Thank you so much for watching.